Let us come before prayer this morning for our world, for our families and our church family. And also this morning, please pray for Suresh's uncle. Suresh and Roja are missionaries in India that we support. And Suresh's uncle, Jess Paul, his mother's brother, actually has cancer and is not doing well. So let's pray for him. And we have lots to praise for as well. So let's pray together. Oh Lord, we cannot adequately express our gratitude that you are our refuge. You are our deliverer. In these times of chaos and uncertainty and even grief, when many of the other things we depended on have been stripped away, we are relieved that you, Lord, remain our rock and our fortress. Father, this morning we want to praise you for so many good things that are happening and have been happening in the life of our church. We praise you, Lord, for John Burtwell's appointment and we continue to, that went well uh, for his MRI. And we want to keep praying for John as he receives his radium treatment, Lord. We also want to praise you for John Freiberg's cataract operation that went really, really well and uh, the great response from the doctor that his sight is better than what they thought it would be. So again, we thank you, Lord, for that. And we do praise you so much. Lord, we, we do pray for Suresh's uncle, Jess Paul, and we just want to lift him up and their whole family to you, Lord, that they would know you, that they would see you, Lord, in all of this and draw comfort and strength from you. With the psalmist, Father, we beg for your deliverance, that you would hear our cries, that for the sake of your name, you would lead and guide us, that you would deliver us from danger, that you would keep us free and let your face shine on us so that we would be saved, that we would be discipled. But as long as the dangers of sickness and death and job loss and isolation remain, let us find our refuge in you, Lord. Forgive us for the times we seek to make refuges of other people, of our neatly laid plans, of our jobs or our savings accounts, or of our routines and our structures. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of these things, for they are from your hand. But in this time when so many of them have crumbled, we are reminded that you alone are the rock that we can depend on. We confess that our frustration, anxiety, discouragement and control in times like this reveal that you too often set our hope on other things. Use this time to redirect our hope to you, knowing that you never fail. Comfort us, Lord, with the truth that you are a God who weeps beside us. Allow us the space to mourn all of these things that grieve your heart as well. And then, Lord, give us creativity and energy and wisdom to love those you have placed around us, to care for others within this new family that you've brought us into. You have formed us as your church and to extend love and support to the hurting world in which we live. We pray, Lord, for the healing of our hearts, the healing of relationships, for support and encouragement in community, for joy and love in our families. Help us, Lord, to see our circumstances the way you do, to weep but not to lose heart, to question but not to grow bitter, to acknowledge the hard things but to press on with endurance, knowing that you also faced pain and loss and did so for the joy set before you and for love of us. Give us eyes to see the many gifts that you shower on us and grace to rejoice in them even while we feel the weight of living in a global pandemic. Remind us that our times are in your hands, that you alone are our saviour and that we can trust you. In the precious name of Jesus Christ our Lord we pray and all God's people said, Amen. We turn now to our scriptures. And our scriptures today are two. And they're two that John Wesley turned to and read on that day in Aldersgate 282 years ago. 
The first is from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. And Mark 12, verse 34. But let us start with 2 Peter 1, verses 3 and 4. And I'm reading from the NIV. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. And our second reading comes from Mark chapter 12 verse 34. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we let God's word dwell in our hearts and our minds, let us continue to worship with his great song, When We All Get to Heaven. <laughs> 